Hey, I'm Michael. It's really hard to get rid of it. But it's even easier to motion track difficult video shots. In 99%, I prefer Mocha AE over the built-in motion tracker because it's faster and more accurate. Still, if it comes to more difficult shots with fast motion blurred objects where the tracker loses track, then you have to get deeper into Mocha AE. But if you don't have the time to learn it from the ground up, then this After Effects tutorial might be something for you. We're gonna take just the most essential things in Mocha AE, then go back into After Effects as fast as possible where I, and maybe you, feel most comfortable. Let's focus on this part of my video. Because it contains two rapid movements of my hand, followed by rather subtle movements. Perfect for this tutorial. To avoid the tracker to analyze unnecessary portions of the clip, you can split the clip or, like in my case, trim the comp to the work area. Then look for Mocha AE in the effects panel, apply it to the footage layer and click on the Mocha AE logo to open Mocha's user interface. I'm in Mocha AE's classic workspace, which is shown in the very right of the menu bar. If you are in another mode, you can change it here or press Ctrl or Command 2 to get into the classic workspace. With the magnifier icon in the top toolbar, you can zoom into your region of interest. Then select the X-Spline tool right next to the zoom tool and draw a rectangle around the object you want to track. Of course, you can draw any shape or even trace the object's outlines, but I prefer a bounding box-like shape because it gives me a better clue about the object's rotation. To complete the preparation, uncheck the shear checkbox, because we want to track only the motion and not how the object warps. I considered it in my intro. It worked well, but it also made things unnecessarily complicated. Okay, let's start the tracker by pushing the track forward icon, which works quite well for a while, but loses the object when the object starts to move unpredictably. This is where you have to stop the tracker. Move the playhead back to the point where the tracking is still correct. Then turn on Show Planar Surface in the top toolbar and you'll see this blue box that is actually responsible for the tracking and not the spline we drew before. Mocha AE is a planar tracker, whereas After Effects has a point tracker. Before we move on, adjust the planar surface to match the X-spline and make sure that the playhead is still on the last frame where the planar surface still fits the object. Then check Manual Track, Go to the next frame and move the planar surface to the target object. Please do not move just the mask, which is a common mistake when the planar surface is hidden. Adjust the planar surface to match the position and the rotation of the object, and the mask readjusts automatically. Repeat this procedure for the next frames. Because I don't move my hand towards the camera or away from it, I don't have to adjust the scale of the planar surface. When you feel that the object's movement starts to slow down, then check Large Motion. Click on the Track Forward button and let Mocha AE do the job for you, until it loses track again. Same procedure then. Check Manual Track, go to the frame after the last frame where the object has been properly tracked, adjust the planar surface frame by frame and go back to the automatic tracking as soon as the object moves predictable again which is the case until the end of my clip. Then exit Mocha AE, but don't forget to save. Back in After Effects, create a new null layer, go to Mocha AE, open tracking data, click on the Create Track Data button, hit OK, change Export option to Transform, set Layer Export to the null layer, and click on Apply Export. Scrub through the timeline to check if the null layer matches your object's movement. If you have an element that should be matched with your tracked object, then import it, drag it into the composition window, parent it to the null layer, change its position to 0, 0, rotation also to 0, and adjust the scale if necessary. Of course, it doesn't have to be the exact center. Then hit play. Because there is a tiny bump in the scale that I don't like, I'm gonna delete the scale keyframes in the null layer. 
As I said before, I didn't consider the scale anyway. Looks better for me now. But to add some more realism to it, check the motion blur checkbox. Which looks quite okay at first glance. But when we scrub through the timeline, frame by frame, the motion blur doesn't match the video. It appears way stronger than in reality. When we have a closer look at the advanced composition settings, the shutter angle is 180 degrees, which is okay in most cases. For example, you shot a video in 24 frames per second and the shutter was set to 148, which equivalent is 180 degrees. Because I know that I shot the clip in 1 400th, we have to find out the proper shutter angle to it. I found this math formula on ProVideoCoalition.com. By the way, a really cool website with a lot of in-depth news and articles on After Effects. They also generously posted some of my tutorials. Go check it out! So according to the formula, it is the frame rate I shot with, which is 23.976, multiplied by 360 and its result divided by my shutter speed of 400. And the final result is roughly 22. Back in After Effects, I'm gonna set the shutter angle to this value and boom, the motion blur matches the video. Okay, that's it guys. I hope you liked this tutorial. Now I have to get my shit together. See you. See you next time.